Hi friends, welcome to my channel BLSI Gyan. This video is about the calculation of P4 depth. So if you are watching for the first time, I request you to subscribe to my channel to get all the stuff related to BLSI. So now without wasting the time, let's get started. So FIFO or FIFO stands for first in, first out. So here it's like a memory organization where the data which is entering is leaving the uh, leaving out first. So the data which is coming is going out first. It's also similar to RAM, but the only difference is that here the data which is entering first or the data which is written first is read first. Whereas in RAM, you can randomly write at any particular location and you can uh, retrieve the data at any particular location. So these FIFOs are like a temporary memory. They are used for synchronization and handshaking mechanisms. Friends, I have made a separate video on FIFO. I will provide the link in the description box. If you want, you can check it out. So now let us see how to calculate the depth of a FIFO. See, mainly when we have two modules, which is suppose, for example, module A and module B. So module A is working at a frequency FA, which is different from the module B frequency, which is FB. Now, what should be the depth of the FIFO so that whatever the data is written by module A is properly read by the data module B. So no data should be lost. So there are the different scenarios like we have module A is working at a higher frequency than module B or module B is working at a higher frequency than module A. Module B is mainly here we are considering it as a reading module and this one is as a writing. So writing can be taken place at a higher frequency or reading can be taken at a higher frequency or both the modules are working at different same frequency. So what should be the depth of the FIFO so that we have all we are not going to lose any data. So uh, I have divided this into different scenarios like uh, first one is where the module A is working at a higher frequency than module B. So before that, how to calculate the depth of the FIFO? So friends, mainly we require the FIFO when we are working at different frequencies, right? When your write is at a different frequency and read is at a different frequency. So that time you, you have to um, uh, guarantee that you are not losing any data. So if you are writing at a frequency of suppose 200 megahertz and you are reading the data at 100 megahertz so what will happen there is a mismatch so definitely the data is all is not read by the module b so what will happen the data will be lost so in between these two models we are going to put a fifo so what should be the depth of the fifo okay so here a simple thing is that the depth is calculated by finding the number of the data items the number of the data items which are not read in the period in which the writing process is done. So if writing process is done at a particular frequency, so during that time period, whatever the data items are not read is nothing but they are kept in another place. It is as simple as if you have purchased a five kgs of sugar from a market and you brought it at home, you brought it to your home and you found that there is no uh, container of 5 kgs capacity. You have only a 3 kg capacity container. So what you are going to do, you are putting the 3 kg of the sugar in that container which you have and you are searching for the someone something else which can hold the other 2 kgs. So once this um, 3 kgs is completed, you can put it back to the um, 2 kgs back to the 3 kgs container. So this is also as simple as it is. The FIFO depth is nothing but the how much of the data the uh, module B is not able to retrieve, not able to read that we are putting it in a temporary storage place. So it is simply we can say that the number of the data items left without reading. So uh, as we have seen, the different scenarios we have here, like the module A is working at a higher frequency and module B is working at a lower frequency. See here, module A is nothing but writing, friends. We are considering this as a writing and this one as a reading. So the writing frequency, module A is writing at a frequency of 80 megahertz, suppose, 
and module B is writing at a 50 megahertz frequency. And the burst length means the number of the data items which we are going to send from module A to module B is uh, suppose 120. And there are no idle cycles. Idle cycles means empty cycles between the read and write. So sometimes we get this. I will explain in the next slide about this in detail. So uh, how to find the depth of the 5.6 in such condition? So here you know that the time required to write one data item. First, we need to calculate the time required to write one data item. So how much it will be? It is working at 100 megahertz, uh, 80 megahertz frequency, sorry here. So 1 by 80. So that is nothing but 12.95 nanoseconds of the time is required to write one data item, right? But how many data items you need to write? It is nothing but the burst length. So what is the burst length? 120. So you need to uh, write 120 into 12.5. That is you require 1500 nanoseconds to write the entire data. So what we said that uh, the depth of the FIFA is nothing but the number of the items left which are not read during the writing time period. So here it is the 1500 is the total writing time um, for the data, right? Now we will go for the read. So the time required to read one data item. What is the read frequency? Read frequency is 50 megahertz. So 1 by 50 is how much? 20 nanoseconds. So we got the frequency or for writing, sorry, time for writing the one data item. Now, the number of the data items that can be read in a duration of 1500 because total duration is this much. This is the time, total writing time. So during this time, when the module A is writing, how much data is read by the module B? And whatever is left, that we will put it in the FIFO. Right? So the concept is very simple. This is module A, module B. The module is writing, A is writing some data in a particular uh, time duration, suppose here 1500 only, I will take 1500 nanoseconds. So during this 1500 nanoseconds, how much is the data that is um, B is able to read? And whatever is left, that is we are going to put it in the FIFO. So how that much size of the FIFO we want. So actually we are calculating the size of the FIFO or in uh, technically we can say it as the depth of the FIFO, right? So here, uh, now we can see that the number of the data items that can be read during a duration of 1500 because 1500 is the writing total writing time. So it is nothing but for 20 nanoseconds are required for reading one data item. So 1500 nanoseconds in 1500 nanoseconds it can read only 75 data items. But how much is the total number of the data items to be read? That is 120. So how many are left? 120 minus 75, that is 45. So the depth of the minimum depth of the FIFO is 45. Friends, this is the very simple scenario where we have no weight states, right? Now, next condition, we will see the next scenario where you have the FA, that is module A, writing frequency is again higher and reading frequency is again less as in the previous one. But here, what is the change is that there are some idle cycles. There are some idle cycles in between both read and write. What is this idle cycles? Idle cycles are nothing but the uh, there is no data transmission or reception takes place during this. So it has it is like a wait cycle, wait state. Okay. So the number of idle cycles, for example, if we'll take for example here, I have taken the FAS same 80 only, FB also same 50 megahertz. Burst length is also 120. Only we have added the number of idle cycles between two successive write is one. Means first you are writing, then you are waiting, then you are again writing. So to in total number of two clock cycles, we are completing one write. Right. Similarly, the number of idle cycles between two successive read is three. So this is one read and this is the another read. In between, you have to leave three successive clock cycles. So total how many these are? Four. So four clock cycles are required for one read. Right. So here the time required to read one data item is how much? Two. Why two? Because here we are one is writing time and one is the idle time. So two into one by 80 that is 25 nanoseconds. Similarly the time required to write all the data in the burst. How much is the burst length? Is 120. 
So 120 into 25, this is the total writing time. Now we will calculate the read for one data item. We know that for writing one data item, we require four clock cycles. So we are multiplying it with four because three are the weight states. One is the reading one. So four into one by 50. 50 is what? The frequency of the read. So it is coming around 80 nanoseconds. Now the number of the data items that can be read during a duration of 300, sorry, 3000 nanoseconds. This is the total time. So when the module A is writing, how much is the data uh, that is read by module B? And whatever is left that we will put it in the FIFO, right? So this is 3000 divided by 80. So it is coming around 37.5 something. So we can take consider it as 37 because here we are considering the data. So we cannot go for 38. So better uh, we take consider it as 37. So whatever is remaining, 120 is the total burst length, 37 are read. So how much is left? 83. So 83 is the minimum length of the FIFO. So 83 should be the minimum, uh, sorry, depth of the FIFO in this scenario. The next scenario is when FA is less than FB. Means your writing speed is less and your reading speed is high. Okay. So when you whatever the data you are putting is at a lower rate, right? And the data reception is at a faster. See here with no read and write cycle, no idle cycles. So there are no idle cycles, no uh, wait states between the read and write. So here you can see that the write frequency is 30 because it is lower than the read frequency and read frequency, for example, we will take it as 50. And the burst length, same we have taken here and there are no idle cycles in both the read and writing. Okay, so what should be the length? So actually here, uh, FIFO depth of one will be sufficient. Why one will be sufficient? Because whatever the data you are putting, that is already read, uh, read by the uh, module B. So this is for the safety purpose to not to lose any data. Okay. Actually, in such scenarios, a FIFO is not required. But if you are using then the depth of one FIFO, one means like a simple buffer is used and we want to, uh, to synchronize the data transmission between module A and module B. Clear. Next, we'll move to the condition scenario, fourth scenario, where we have FA is less than FB means writing frequency is less than reading frequency and we have idle cycles also here. So in this scenario, you have to calculate again uh, the depth of the pipe for in the similar manner which we have used in the earlier examples. See here, FA is 30 megahertz, FB that is the reading frequency is 50 megahertz, burst length again is 120 we have taken and here the idle cycles between two successive write is one, similar to the previous one. Like one is the writing uh, cycle and another one is the idle one. So total you want two cycles to complete one write, right? And the number of idle cycles between two successive read is three. Means one is read and uh, th three you are uh, waiting one. So total how many are required? Four, four are required for read. Now let us calculate. So here also the time required to write one data item because one data item is written as 1 by 30 into 2. Why multiply by 2? Because here we are uh, having a idle cycle between two successive write is 1. So 1 for write and 1 for idle. So it is 2 multiplied by 1 by 30. That is it is coming around 66.67 nanoseconds. Then the time required to write all the data items in the burst. The burst length is 120. So multiply this one with the frequent and time period which you got earlier for one data item. You will get the total time period for the entire burst. Um, how much time is required for writing. So during this time period, how much is the module B or the frequency uh, module B is able to read that we need to calculate. Okay. So whatever is left, that is nothing but the depth of the fiber.
So let us calculate first the data and time required to read one data item. That is four. Why four? I have explained earlier only, just now only. That is three is the number of idle cycles given. Plus one is the read. So four. Four into one by 50. 50 megahertz is the frequency given. Okay. So it is coming around 80 nanoseconds. Now the number of the data items during the can be read read during the 8000 nanoseconds. This is the total write time. So when the module A is writing, how much is the data that is read by module B? So that is 100. But how many um, modules are to be, how many data items are to be read? Because the burst length is 120. So 120 minus 100. So 20 are left. So what should be the minimum depth of the FIFO? The minimum depth of the FIFO should be 20. Is it, I hope that this is a, uh, making a clear uh, the difference between uh, the reading and the writing when the reading is at a higher speed and the writing is at a lower speed. Now we have another scenario where we have FA and FB both are equal. Okay, with no idle cycle. There are no idle cycle. Whatever the data you are writing is taken out by the module B. And the bus length we have taken as same. So here in this case, see A is writing, B is taking the data immediately. Whatever is written is taken. So there is no need for the FIFO. Your FIFO is not required. If there is no phase difference. But if there is a phase difference, then you can have a FIFO of depth one so that you can ensure that there is no loss of data between these two models. Okay. So this is a very simple concept. Next one is when we have idle cycle here also you can see that the writing and the reading frequencies both are same but here we have idle cycles okay for both read and write so same frequency of fa that is writing frequency is 50 megahertz and also fb is also same so it is also 50 megahertz burst length is the number of the data items to be trans transferred is 120 again same we have taken and the number of idle cycles between two successive write is 1 and the number of idle cycles between two successive read is 3. So similarly, one is writing phase, one is the idle one. So total two clock cycles are required to write one data item. Similarly, for reading, one is reading and three are idle. So total four are clock cycles are required to complete one read of a data item, right? So let us calculate the depth of the FIFO. So time required to write one data item is two, why two? Because idle clock cycle is one and the normal writing is one. So one plus one is two, two multiplied by the uh, one by frequency of the writing module, okay? So the writing module has a frequency of 50 megahertz. So one by 50, that is coming around 40 nanoseconds. In 40 nanoseconds, it is able to write one data item. Now, how much is the time required to write 120 data items? So, for the total burst, it is 120 into 40 nanoseconds. That is coming around 4,800 nanoseconds. Now, for the read, we know that for read, by reading one data item, we require four clock cycles. So, four multiplied by one by read frequency is also 50. So that is 50 megahertz. So you are getting here 80 mega, uh, 80 nanoseconds. Now, the number of the data items that can be read in a duration of 8,000. Sorry, this is 4,800. Is 4,800 by 80. That is coming around 60. So the remaining number of bytes to be st stored in the FIFO is 120 divided minus 60, that is coming around 60. So the minimum depth of the FIFO is 60 in this case. I hope this gave you a clear idea about how to calculate uh, the depth of the FIFO. And uh, uh, thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.